Hey YouTube, it's Bobby, aka Paginator, and I'm here with even more messy shelves behind me because I'm still trying to re reorganize. And I'm going to tell you about the books I read in the month of May. Um, first off, sorry for the hat. I'm not. I'm like just not able to like get my hair to cooperate today so we're going with a hat it is what it is all right so we're going to start with the five books from my official tbr and um we'll go through the other books i read in the month of may after those five so beginning with frankly in love by david yoon this was a super fun book i i actually listened to it on audio because I was taking a road trip during the first weekend in May and I needed something to listen to. And I thought, well, this is on my TBR. I will listen to this. So I was able to get it through my local library system and it was really cute. It was um, a tale of Frank Lee. So he's really being pushed by his parents to date someone who's Korean because that's their family's culture and heritage. And there's a girl named Joy Song who's Korean that they'd really like him to date. Um, however, Joy's already dating someone else, uh, a young man who's black, I think, if I remember right, and Frank is really interested in a white girl named Britt. So Joy and Frank come up with a plan to pretend to date each other while secretly actually dating their chosen boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, and eventually they end up catching feelings for one another, much to Frank's dismay, because then he's, like, doing what his parents want him to do. Um... This was, like, the love story itself was really cute, and I appreciated how it ended. I'm not going to tell you how, but um, um, one thing that really bothered me about this book was that the parents frequently served alcohol to the teenagers, and I have a problem with that for two reasons. One, it's illegal, and two, teenagers' brains aren't developed yet. I mean, they're not really even developed at 21 when they're legally allowed to drink alcohol, like... I just have a problem with that. It really bothers me. But other than that, it was a cute fake dating trope story. I am not going to put this in my middle school um, library because of the whole alcohol thing. But um, otherwise, it's a fun read. Up next on my TBR is Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam. This ended up being my favorite book of the month of May with one potential possible change to that. I'll explain it in a little bit. Um, this is about Darius, who is a young Iranian American. Well, he's an American, but his mother's family is from Iran. And the grandfather is not doing well. He's got a brain tumor, and they don't know how long he'll last. So the whole family packs up and goes to Iran. And so most of it takes place there. And there is a whole lot of beautiful description of different places. I was constantly like pausing to Google and look at pictures of things. And it made me want Persian food so bad. And of course, there's no like Persian food restaurant anywhere near me. Like, so I might have to learn how to make some of these things. But his grandmother's an amazing cook. And so they talk a lot about Persian food in there. Made me hungry. But um, another thing that that relates to is that Darius is a little bit overweight. He struggles with depression. And depression medicine can actually make a person gain weight. So that's not helpful. Um, his father is very mindful of what Darius is eating. He wants him to be skinny. And his father has depression too, so he should know better. Um, also, just as a heads up out there, parents, teachers, anyone, if you're working with a child in any way in your life that is overweight, staring at their food while they eat is not going to help them. That shaming is not going to help them. Like, I can tell you from experience, those things don't work. They actually cause more damage than they're worth, so please don't do that. Okay, side ranch side. Um, the story of this book is absolutely beautiful. Darius makes his first, like, real actual best friend and kind of has a little bit of attraction towards him, so he's wondering, am I gay? Am I bisexual? What's going on there? And uh, it's just beautiful, and I recently picked up the sequel because I loved it so much. I was like, gosh, I got to read the next one. I have got to. Um, now is a good time to let you know that there are quite a few pictures that I'm going to have to insert in the video because I took books to school, quite a few of them, before I filmed this wrap-up. I'm sorry. 
Anyway, the next book on my TBR was The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. <laughs> this one the newberry and it's highly acclaimed however i struggled getting through it i could not connect with the characters i don't know why um but just to give you a little sum up because a lot of people do love this book and if you love this book like i'm not taking away from that whatsoever please love it with all your heart like but it is about a young girl who's raised by a witch in the woods. This witch usually takes these abandoned babies to a nearby village and gives, sets them up with a good family. And she feeds them starlight. But this one particular girl, um, she accidentally feeds moonlight and that gives her magical powers. So she chooses to raise this girl as her granddaughter in the woods, teaching her the ways of living there. And eventually she'll have to teach her magic when she comes into her powers. Um, as I said, I struggled a little bit. I, th I think it's because I couldn't connect with the characters. I'm not sure why. Um, it's a great premise for a story and there were elements that I really loved. Like there's a little character who's like a tiny little dragon and I loved him. Um, there were some really fun characters in there and stuff is just wasn't my favorite. So I think you get what I'm saying. Next on my TBR was If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. This was phenomenal. I mean, can you see all the award stickers going down the side? It is justly deserved. This is about a trans girl, Amanda, who is a new girl in school, and she's starting to make really good friends, and there's a boy who likes her, and she's really afraid because what if all these people find out that she's transgender and used to be known as Alex? Is it Alex? Andrew used to be known as Andrew um she's really worried about both the friends and the boyfriend really just hating her because of her former life before she was Amanda um this is very well written um the author made a point to say this is not meant to be representation of every trans woman's journey it's just one trans woman's journey and i think that's important to remember as we read any book no author is out there trying to say i am encompassing the great life experience of this group of people no they're not they're telling a story about one character or a small group of characters we need to like chill and just appreciate the, the stories that we read for what they are, which is one character or group of characters, like their singular experience, and that's all. Gosh, I'm ranting a lot in this video today. I apologize. But beautiful, beautiful, definitely a five-star read for me. And the last official book for my TBR was Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I read this partially um, from the physical book and partially on audio. And I really, really enjoyed it. This is an adult fantasy and um, it's very violent. Like in the very first chapter, we meet a character whose mother sews his eyelid shut and carves a bird into his chest. Um, yeah, the violence is going to be here for the entire time. We have a lot of elements going on here and we have the holy city of Tova and the winter solstice is coming up and it's usually this big time of celebration and renewal but it's like coinciding with the solar eclipse which makes it even like a rarer event and we have lots of people bound for Tova including Chiala um she it has powers that her song can calm waters and she we get the idea that the the creatures or people from the teak territory where she's from are very aligned with the sea and the magic and that involves the sea and its creatures and more surprises about that come out with Chiala during the course of the book which I won't explain for you right now um Serapio is a blind young man he's the man who gets his eyelids sewn shut by his mother um and he um, has a connection with ravens or crows. Is it, do they call them ravens or crows in this book? I can't remember. Hold on. Crows. And the, th through his crows, he's connected with, he's able to see. Um, Serapio and Shala end up on this journey towards Tova together and definitely develop a relationship um, we also have another character that we hear from who is a uh, priestess. Now I got to check and see if I'm saying the right words for her. Narampa is the sun priest 
the order of the oracles. And there's um, an interesting, like, third gendered person that's in her area. He's the priest, he or she, or I forget the word that they use in the chair. Chair? It's X-I-R. I'm not exactly sure how to say it. In the audio version, they said chair. Um, anyway, they're a little bit duplicitous and a little bit shady because that part of their job is to protect the sun priest. So we have a lot of characters moving around. It is a lot to take in. So if you're going to pick up this book, I highly suggest reading through the character list and keeping a tab, like a sticky note tab on it or something to flip back to in case you get lost as you're reading because there's a lot of people and movers and shakers to track throughout this book. All right, that brings us to the non-TBR books that I read in the month of May. We have Flamer by Mike Carrado. This is a graphic novel, and I'll just kind of randomly flip open here to a page. Some of the pages have color. Um, many of them do not. This is uh, about a, a group of boys who go to a summer camp, and it's between middle and high school. Aiden is our main character. And he is really struggling. Um, he's bullied and picked on. He's called gay a lot. Um, and he spends time with Elias, who's a boy that he cannot stop thinking about. So this is kind of a path of self-acceptance, self-discovery, um, first crush slash first love kind of thing. Um, the I heard the author speaking about this on... Um, a zoom thing what was it for y'all west and he said he intentionally gave it this title flamer to like because you know that i don't know if oh how do i explain this like the stereotypical archetype of a gay character like sometimes the word flaming is used to describe them so he really wanted to intentionally play with that word um bringing also in elements of fire being at a camp in the woods. So I feel like it was really well done. I'm not going to take it to my middle school library because it introduces some anti-gay F words that I don't want some of my particular students to pick up next year. And some of them are already really bad about that, which breaks my heart. Anyway, uh, moving on. I listened to this massive sucker, A Court of Silver Flames. I saw it was available to check out on my local library thing as an audiobook. And being the end of the school year, I have a lot of like physical things I need to be doing with my hands to like make out end of year awards and different things. So I decided more audiobooks the better. I listened to this one. It is the story of Nesta, who is Farah's sister. There are lots of mixed feelings if you go online in different book groups and things. Some people love Nesta, some people hate her. I always was irritated by how badly she treated Farah, but I also didn't fully hate her. I thought about what I might do if I had been through all the crap that she'd been through, and I might be a little bit angry too. I, that doesn't justify her mistreating her sister in any way, shape, or form, but it's there. Um, she... I mean, even people who are very hurt deserve to have some happiness in their life. So that's all I'll say. There's so many spoilers and things for the characters and series and even some like Feyre and Reese stuff that comes out in this book. So I don't really want to say much more because I don't want to accidentally like ruin the reading experience for some people who love this series. So there we go. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a few titles that I don't physically have with me that I'll be inserting pictures for. Up uh, next is When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson. This is a graphic novel and it tells a story about two brothers who are in a refugee camp. The younger brother, we get the idea that he might be on the autism spectrum. He is nonverbal except for one word that he constantly says over and over again. And the older brother gets an opportunity to go to school. But that means he's have to going to have to leave his brother back behind in the camp. And even though people in his area of the camp look after the younger brother a lot and are very good to him, he's scared about it. And what if he hurts himself or runs away or who knows what? So it's 
uh, very much a story about brothers as well as the refugee life and the experience of what it's like to be in one of those camps, which completely sounds miserable. I don't know how people survive that. Um, but it was a very well done graphic novel, perfectly appropriate for middle school, which is why it's in my classroom. Up next, we have Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. <laughs> if I hadn't read Darius the Great, this would be my favorite book of the month of May, I think. Um, this is her new book. It is about a girl who is a blacksmith, and she has the magical ability to imbue magic into the weapons that she makes. Um, for example, at the beginning of the book, we see her make a um, mace, and when you swing it around, it will get the wind going so hard that it will knock people over. Um, she has social anxiety and a lot of, of anxiety similarities to myself. So I identified with her quite well. And then she's really, really not interested in romantic relationships. Well, she gets hired by this female warlord uh, who to make this broadsword. And it's supposed to be the best weapon that she's ever made. And if she proves herself worthy enough with this weapon, then the warlord will hire her and her sister to move to her estate and they'll always be safe and have income and, and so on. And while she's working on this broadsword, she's about to the point where she's going to get ready to put the magic in. And she happens to glance out the window and a man is walking by, a young man, and she goes, Ooh, I've never felt this way about someone before. And she thinks to herself, I want to touch him. It's not something she would ever tell anyone else, so it is a secret. Well, that gets poured into the sword, and the sword itself turns into a weapon that can gather secrets. Once it's pricked the blood of someone, it will then tell the person holding the sword all of the secrets of that person. And I better not tell you any more beyond that, because I don't want to spoil, but there are going to be political things happening there is going to be a quest there is going to be an alliance with possibly shady partners um quite an adventure there are going to be a couple different couples that you might ship through this book and it's very very well done i highly enjoyed it and i took it immediately to school because I had a student that I thought would really love it, and she didn't check it out before school year was over. I was like, come on, we got like five more days. Check check out this book and read it, and she wouldn't do it. Anyway, I'll get somebody to check it out next year, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's come back to something I do have to hold up for you. This is Brightly Woven by Alexander Bracken. This is the graphic novel version of Brightly Woven, and the graphic novel is done in bright colors, as you can see here. All throughout, the pages are colorful. Um, this is uh, about Sidel Maribel. She is a 14 year old and she's a weaver. She really wants a life outside her tiny village and this young wizard named Waylon North appears and asks for her help. He has a secret that could stop a war between the kingdoms and he has to reach the capital with the news in time. He needs a navigator who can mend his magical cloak so Sidel is perfect for the job because she is very good at weaving and sewing etc so they race against the clock to deliver their message and she discovers that she has some abilities that she didn't know she had before um this was recommended to me by one of my students and the weekend that like she sent me a message um actually on this channel saying you should read this book i don't know how she found this channel by the way i don't promote it in my classroom but anyway she said you should read this book and i was at walmart and i saw it sitting on the shelf and it's like oh gonna get it so I read it it was pretty enjoyable I never read the original um brightly woven but of course it's gonna be the same story very interesting the way that they used weaving and um fabric in the magic I really enjoyed that part of it so this will go to the middle school I just haven't taken it there yet all right I've got two more that I don't physically have to hold up for you I have I think I love you by Ariane de Sombre <laughs> This was so adorable that I took it right to school. This is a female-female romance that is perfectly appropriate for young kids to read, um, or my middle schoolers anyway. Um, we have two girls who are kind of... How do I explain this? 
they're both looking to make a student film to enter this competition and win a scholarship and this takes place in New York City and we get to hear about a lot of different locations in the city as they roam trying to make these films and the two girls have always kind of like hated each other within their friend group or do they really not we shall see by the time the story ends it was a super cute story though I really really enjoyed it and immediately emailed the parents of, of one of my students saying you need to read this book because I knew she would enjoy it so anyway um that was I think I love you by Ariane de Sombre and the other one I don't have to hold up because I read it as an ebook is Monstrous Volume 1 by Marjorie Liu. Um, I was watching Jesse from Bowties and Books and they recommended this series and I went to my local library system online to see if I could check out the ebook and they had it available so I read Volume 1. I'm going to say the series is not for me. Um, I, I think it's a enjoyable premise about a girl who's like discovering that she has this monstrous side of her which partially involves consuming the blood of people but it just wasn't like a story that really gripped me I read it and I was like mm, okay I'm so so all right let's get to my last three titles all of which I have to hold up for you Ooh, don't need that sticky note on there um, Charming as a Verb by Ben Philippe. This is um, a rom-com. We have our two main characters who, in their own ways, are both a little bit of schemers. We have Henry Haltewanger, who is super popular. He's very charming. He usually gets his way. He runs a dog walking business, and um, he is a student at Fate Academy, which is kind of a prestigious school in New York. Um, He's first generation Haitian and um, he lives in the same building as Corinne Troy. Henry is really trying to get to Columbia University. Um, his That's like his dad's pushing him because like that's the, where the, the two of them have always wanted Henry to go. Corinne's mom is a dean in one of the departments at Columbia University. However, that's not why they become friends. Corinne discovers that Henry has some less than honest practices going on in his dog walking business and she kind of blackmails him. It's kind of like a can't buy me love situation if you've seen that movie from the 80s. Um, she says, I won't tell anyone your secret if you help me become more popular. Like, I need to branch out socially, help me make friends and so on. And he's like, okay. So Corinne is trying to become more social because... She has a dream of getting into Princeton and she needs more like social activities and things on her applications. So they're both kind of a little bit like using each other, but it turns into real feelings on both ends until Henry does something that could possibly destroy their relationship forever. Um, I do feel like this is going to be okay for my middle schoolers to read if I put like a little YA sticker on it, which is what this sticky note is for. So that when I go back to school in the fall with a giant box full of books, I will remember to mark it. Up next, oh, we have another one with a sticky note on it. Um, this is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. And this one I read because G from Book Roast's um, Patreon book club was reading this. And I thought, you know what, this has been on my shelves for a while. I should finally get to it. So I read it and finished it yesterday. And I really, really enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite book ever, but I'll explain what it is and I'll tell you why I enjoyed it and what were some things that concerned me. So, Maya Tamarin is our main character and she is the daughter of a very famous tailor. Um, he kind of lost it once her mother died though, so her father has been more into drinking and like just being very depressed. And she kind of took over his business um, but a royal messenger comes and says to her father, you have to come to the the um, palace. The emperor, wa the emperor wants you to be a tailor um, for him. Either you or your son has to be in the carriage by tomorrow morning or there will be consequences. And so there's one brother in the household that could possibly go, but he has no sewing skills. So Maya decides this decides to disguise herself as a boy because in this society women don't have 
careers. Um, and she is going to go. When she reaches the palace, she discovers that not only is this uh, really scary environment, but there's also a competition to become the Imperial Tailor. There are 12 other people, or she's one of 12, going for the job. So the first part of the book is kind of like a Project Runway competition. The Emperor is about to marry this woman from the Warring Kingdom, and if they can marry, then it'll solidify things and bring peace to the land. Um, Maya is struggling. Because the other tailors have been tailors for their whole lives. And she's just a teenage girl. Um, also, the Imperial Enchanter is kind of onto her. He's like, I think you're Maya. I don't think you're Keaton, which is her brother's name. And she's scared. Um, her father sent her with a special pair of scissors that he'd used throughout his career. And when she touches them, they glow and magical things start to happen. It actually makes her garments much more beautiful. They still look like her work, her style, but she's greatly aided by the magic and she becomes afraid of that actually because she doesn't want to rely on magic to earn her place. Um, there is more to the story, which I'm trying to think of how to best describe as to not spoil for you. Um... Eventually, there is a quest that is nearly impossible, and Maya gets sent along with the um, Enchanter to go on this quest, and they have to find three impossible to find materials in order to make three dresses that are impossible to find, and it's kind of crazy. Eden, who is the Enchanter... Um, and Maya develop a strong relationship as they travel together. And strange things happen, one of which involves a demon. Um, and by the end of the book, it sets up for a sequel in a way that makes me go, okay, I need to know right now what's going on. Hmm. So I don't think I've spoiled anything for you there. So again, I would recommend reading this. The the major problem I had with this, though, is that anytime she gets into a sticky situation, Eden is the one that rescues her. Like, when is she going to rescue herself? Um, I'm trying to think if there was a time when she didn't need him to get out of the sticky situation. And I can't think of one. Maybe there is. If you've read this book and you know um, of that situation, definitely let me know in the comments. And... Uh, yeah, but I do have the sequel, so I'll be picking that up when I have time to, which is, I don't know when. But very interested to see how the story continues for these characters. All right, before I get to my last book, I just want to um, take a moment to mention um, that if you are interested in hearing more of my thoughts about books, whether it be book reviews, book hauls, um, unboxing, etc. You can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm not a YouTuber that gets caught up in the number of sub subscribers that I have, but if you're interested, you can. And I usually upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays, so uh, we'll have that to look forward to. I do have some camping trips and things coming up in the summertime, and that might interrupt my video schedule, but I'm trying to be really organized and plan ahead. So I've got at least two videos a week for you guys, and if you already are a subscriber, thank you for joining and listening to me rant about books. All right, that brings me to the last book. Now, as I film, it is the last day of May, and I'm not technically done with this, but I know I'm close enough to finish. And this is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. My cousin Dylan has been trying to get me to read this series forever, and I finally picked it up. And holy crap, why did it take me so long to get to this? This is definitely a fantasy series that is worth getting into. This is about a young woman who thinks she just has kind of this luck that builds up sometimes and she can influence people with it. But actually what she has is magic. Her name is Vin and she lives in a world um, where a thousand years before there had been a hero that was supposed to save the world and he failed. Brandon, Brandon Sanderson talked about the idea for this book came from while he was reading Harry Potter and 
there was all this back and forth about Harry being the chosen one and taking out Voldemort. And he was like, you know, those evil guys just never get a break. What would happen if the chosen one failed? And so then our main character in Mistborn lives in a world where that actually happened. And a thousand years since the world has kind of fallen to crap. Um, these ash mountains spew ash all the time. There's not, there's no flowers. Like she, um, hears about a flower and would really like to see one at one point. Um, there's not really much beauty in the world and we have definite class systems with disparity. Like there's a group called the Ska and they are portrayed in a way that is very similar to what I would imagine the um, African-American slaves went through during the slavery times. They were kept on plantations, many of them, um, and owned as, I don't know how you own a person, but it happens. It happened in history and it happened in this book. Um, but Vin and Kelsier, who is another magical person, he is misborn like she discovers she is. Um, they are working on a plan to take down the Lord Ruler, who everyone assumes is God or like a piece of God or something, to see if they can change the world and make it better. Um, in this world, the magical system is based off of metals and um, those who have the power to work one metal, for example, copper or bronze or iron or something, um, they are mistlings. Did I say that right? Um, someone will correct me if I didn't. And if you have the power to work all of them, you're mistborn. And so she is found by Kelsier near the beginning of the book. Kelsier's the, definitely the leading, leader of the uprising. He has been through some stuff, let me tell you. Um, and he's kind of training her in the ways of Allormancy. Or is it Allomancy? Allor this word is said a million times in here and I can't seem to find one of them. Allomancy. Allomantic metals. Okay, anyway. Vin is being trained and she is also being taught to be a lady so that she can infiltrate in the elite um, nobility, go to the balls and things and see what information she can glean there. Um, I am about 150 pages from the end, but as I said, I know I'm going to be able to finish today, so I'm still counting it as a finish for the May read. I'm predicting five stars, but depending on how it all ends... I'm not sure. And that is the one caveat. Like I did say Darius the Great is not okay is my favorite book for the month of May. And I don't think that's going to change. But depending on how this ends, that could like make me love it a little bit more. However, in my May bullet journal pages on my favorite read of May, I already put this one in. <laughs> oh, can I take a second to show you my June pages? I made them today also. And, um... I like them. I'm doing a Gilmore Girls theme this month. So I always start with a quote. I live in two worlds. One is a world of books. That is a Rory Gilmore quote. And I have some Gilmore Girls stickers. This one says, where you lead, I will follow. And we have Lane, Emily, Rory, and Lorelai up here. And a stack of books with a cup of coffee from Luke's. And I have a calendar there for June. And every day that I read, I get to color it a dot. And so far this year, I've read for fun every single day. I know I can't believe this. My next two pages are TBR and Hall. So I will be writing down my June TBR books. Um, you saw those in my recent TBR video. Um, and any books I haul in the month of June will go here. This page I themed for Luke and Lorelai. So I've got a bunch of Luke things here. A quote that says, I'm fine. I'm great. It's a big, fat, happy, sunshine day for me. Poor Luke. The next pages are my June stats. So at the end of the month, I will tally how many books and pages I have read. I will write down all the books that I read in the month of June. And I kind of overkilled with the stickers in this one. We've got Coffee, 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 Dragonfly Inn. This is their house. We have Lorelai and Rory, Lorelai and Rory, Lorelai and Rory. And then on this one will be my favorite June read. And I've got... Lorelai, um, or not Lorelai, Rory, and her Chilton uniform and a Chilton sticker, and then this one that says, 
stress level, Paris Geller. Paris is just stressed all the time. We've got Rory and what's his face with the umbrellas. That's true love, Ace. And Rory, Lorelai Lane, Paris, Emily, and Sookie. Why can't I ever remember that dude's name unless I'm watching the show? I haven't watched that show in a while. Maybe it's time for a rewatch. Anyway. Wow, that was, this has been a long video, you guys. If you've hung in there with me, comment in the space below with like a little animal or something just for fun. Um, let me know how your reading went in May. If you made it through like one book, good job. If you made it through a bunch, good job too. Like whatever you did is awesome. Um, I am now officially out of school for the summer and it's time for me to go do some June reading. So got to go finish Miss Board today and then I'll be on to the next one. Have a wonderful and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.